Hello, Linear Algebra scholars. Today we're going to talk about inverse matrices. So some matrices, some special matrices, they're called invertible. Um, those special matrices have a corresponding inverse matrix. But what does that even mean? Well, you guys are pretty familiar with um, the inverses of just scalars, of just numbers. So for example, 2 times its inverse, 1 over 2, is equal to 1, right? And you could say this for um, for any number. So 6 times its inverse, 1 over 6, is equal to 1. So, But what's the matrix analog of this? Well, if you have some matrix A times its inverse, it even has the same like to the negative 1 power. A matrix times its inverse is, what's the matrix equivalent of 1? Well, we could just say the identity matrix. And uh, this is true for any matrix that there exists an inverse for it. So like B times B inverse equals the identity matrix. I could have swapped these around. I could have said 1 half times 2 equals 1. I could have said 1 6 times 6 equals 1. Same thing for the matrix universe. I could say A inverse times A equals I, right, for any kind of matrix. Oops. That's a B. And uh, you get the point. So the, the property, the special thing about inverses is that when you take a matrix times its inverse, you get the identity matrix. And remember, what's the identity matrix? It's a matrix who has ones along its main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Okay, so some properties. A inverse, so these are some, this is the main important property is that a matrix times its inverse is I, but you also have some other ones like A inverse inverse. What's that? Well, that just takes you back to A. What about um, what about this guy? What about a times b inverse? Can we rewrite this some way? Can you just like distribute the negative one to each matrix? Kind of, uh, you you do, but you have to reverse the order of the matrices when you distribute the negative one. And you're like, why is this? I last year I would have said just memorize this, but I actually it makes a lot of sense if you think about it geometrically. If you think about inverses as the other property of them geometrically is that inverses undo uh, the transformation. So like if you have a transformation A that, I don't know, reflects vectors over the y-axis, then A inverse will undo that transformation and reflect it back over the y-axis. Um, and so if you have some standard matrix or of a transformation AB, that means first you're doing B to the input vector and then you're doing A to it. So if you have some transformation... A, B, if you have some transformation like this, T of X equals A, B, X, it means first you do B to X, and then you do A. So if you want to invert that, that would mean like the inverse function, T of X, T inverse of X. First you would have to do, the last thing you did to X was multiply by A. So first you have to undo it by A, and then you have to undo that by B. All right, I hope I didn't confuse you, but that's just some intuition for why you have to swap the order when you distribute this negative sign. So that's another property of inverses. Um, okay, let's do an example. Or let's, 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 how do you actually compute the inverse matrices? So this is a very important formula that you need to just know. Um, a two by two matrix is inverse equals it has these, say it has these components, A, B, C, D. It's one over the determinant of the matrix, which if you remember from the previous videos, the determinant of a matrix that's two by two is the difference between the product of the diagonals. So one over the determinant of this matrix is one over A, D minus B, C. And then this, the inverse of a matrix is another matrix. So then you distribute this out here by the components, but you have to change them a little bit. You swap A and D, and then B and C become negative. So here's the formula. So quick example. 1, 2, 3, 4. Inverse equals 1 over 4 minus 6 times 4, 1, negative 2, negative 3. And you can distribute this through. 1 over negative 2. You get negative 2, 1, 3 halves, negative 1 half. So this matrix is the inverse of this matrix, if you don't have that negative 1 there. So that would mean if you just take this matrix 
1, 2, 3, 4 times negative 2, 1, 3 halves, 1 half. I'm not going to do it, but you can trust me. You can try it for yourself. You get the identity matrix. Okay. But the question is, that's all fine and good. But how would you find the inverse of something bigger? Like 4, 3, 0, 0, wait, 4, 3, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. What is the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix? Well, here's the process. <clears throat> you have A, so we could call this A. If you put it in an augmented matrix with the identity matrix as like the right side. And if you take this and you row reduce it so that you get, so that this left half, you row reduce the left half to the identity matrix, whatever you end up getting on the right hand side will be A inverse. So like I can just show you with this example. It's actually kind of cool how it, it works out. Um, the lecture slides have like a good proof for this. Um, so let's just do that really quick just to make sure because it is kind of weird row reducing with like, I don't know. I mean, you've practiced so much row reduction where you just have one augmented column. And so now this kind of might throw you for a loop. So uh, let's go through this row reduction. 4, 3, 0. 4, 3, 0. Uh, 1, 2, 0. Zero, zero, 001 you put this you you put the identity matrix on the right hand side of it so you put in this guy and then you row reduce this until the left hand side is the identity matrix and whatever the right hand side ends up being is is a inverse so um i guess i'll just skip it cuz it's already at 7 minutes i was hoping this would be like a 2 minute video but i always end up talking too much so i'll just come back with i'll show you all the steps and then you can see what the end result is. Okay, so here we go. We took this augmented matrix. We row reduce, row, 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 row reduce. And then we get down to here, where you see on the left is the identity matrix. And then on the right is just something else. And then that's something else by this process. This something else here on the right is actually the inverse of this matrix. So if you call this guy up here, if you call this guy A, then this guy here is A inverse. Okay, it's a very straightforward thing and I don't want to over explain it. So you guys get the point. So then if you multiply these two matrices together, you should get the identity matrix, right? By the properties of inverses. Um, just one other thing, don't let uh, this trip you up if they, tr if they throw in like an extra level of complication. Like if originally, say they gave you a matrix A inverse, say they said this is A inverse and we want you to find A. Well, you can go through the same process and then what would just happen at the end is that the matrix you got here on the right hand side of the augmented matrix would be A. And why is that? Because doing this process gives you the inverse of this matrix, so A inverse inverse is A. So that's how you would find A given A inverse. It's the same exact process. Um, okay, let's cut it here. The next video we're going to like do some algebra with inverses and apply some more properties. Um, or just, yeah, apply these properties up here to solve isolate matrices and stuff. So I'll see you then.